So the orcs and goblins have always been the most kind of playful of, of, of races in the Warhammer world. Um, Rick Priestley famously said they were the gambler's army um, because they have so many random elements and, and uh, there's nothing more random than the squigs. Back then in the early 90s, the, the Games Workshop scooters, they were like, what happens if a goblin rode a space hopper? And from there they were incorporated into the lore of course, as a part fungus creature. Um, and which happened to be an orc delicacy as well. Concepting is a, a massive and really important part of the whole process of creating these units and characters. But thanks to the Warhammer universe, we've got a deep history that we can look at uh, within the miniatures. Because the Squig is such a, a fun little unit within, within the Warhammer world, uh, it was very important to get that across. So making it as strong as possible at the beginning is really important because it's going to have knock-on effects. Uh, when I'm refining the concept, I like to keep uh, have lots of reference, keep lots of textures, uh, looking always referring back to uh, the miniatures to make sure we've got a nice um, transition from the Warhammer tabletop game to our game. After we receive the concept art as well as um, any reference images of the miniatures or the miniatures themselves, in the case of the squig, it could be um, you know scaly skin. A plucked chicken, the legs on an ostrich or on some sort of uh, terrestrial bird uh, for the anatomy that we'll be uh, attempting to incorporate into the character. A task like uh, the squig would take uh, somewhere around 20 days of uh, modeling and texturing time. The biggest issue uh, from the miniatures for us would be uh, functionality for the animators essentially is making it so that this thing can can move in a way that'll be uh, noticeable and, and easy for people to see and from a distance. The feet are so small that you wouldn't really uh, notice anything that they're doing. So what we've opted to do is give them legs more similar to the uh, Mengler squigs or the Great Cave squigs and that way they, they can have a bit of a stride as opposed to just being this this giant you know bouncing mouth. So what really helps us during the animation process is all the kind of the actual models, the miniatures themselves. So that gives a kind of essence of how they should move, the kind of behaviours there, so, and plus supported from the army books. And that's something we pay really strong attention to to make sure we get the actual right detail of how kind of the squigs move. The whole um, process of animating the squig was probably probably at least 50 days. Um, it's, it's very hard to put kind of a number to it, but it's a like extra process because we need to put that kind of loving attention to them. If you look at the um, the army books, there's lots of descriptions how goblins get eaten up by these squigs. It's essentially they're big eating machines. And the thing is with a the squig, there's no other creature in the world that exists. Normally you have other creatures, for instance, you know, the, the boars we had in for, for the green skins. Um, you, you just reference boars, um, but the squig is slightly different. The actual model itself gives you an indication what it what it is. So you go, well, actually, it's like a, a big tongue, big mouth, and you think, well, it's actually kind of like a, a like a dog. Especially with Scarsnet, you've got that relationship being a pet, so you got that kind of synergy. Well, maybe it's kind of this kind of overexcitable puppy. The process for creating the sound for the squig in Warhammer really started by. Um, getting concept art, uh, reference material from Warhammer books and the internet and trying to decide exactly what we wanted the squeak to sound like. Then we'd start recording things that could be things from the real world like animals, humans, but it could also be non-literal sounds like door screeches or other things that we can mix in to create the character. When it came to the squeak, Obviously, it's quite a uh, unique character. It's got a massive mouth, little legs and a huge head, and that's about it. We have to think a little bit outside the box. One of the things we did for it was record the sound of a plunger um, into different materials. So we'd get a giant plunger and we first of all got porridge and we'd plunger away uh, and record the sounds. And then we did it in yogurt, we did it anything else really we can get our hands on because um, we wanted to get that slobbery blah, 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 kind of sound, which weirdly a plunger makes. So you have to then take the individual sounds and create a sound for the whole group. Um, the group can be multiple different sizes, so we have to create different sizes. You can hear that group from different pers camera perspectives, so we have to 
create different perspectives. Once we have the actual sounds, we can put them into the game engine uh, and make sure that they trigger OK. From a designer's perspective, we're here from the very outset. We look at what things are making fun and unique, um, so that they offer something different to the other units that we already have, have in the game. We dig into all the different departments, we see it through from its conception, right right till the end it goes out the door and goes to you guys. Warhammer and Total War are a great combination, you know, they, they, they work very well together, makes our jobs, you know, very pleasurable. When you come to take the tabletop units and bring them into our game, we go deeper and deeper. We make sure we read um, everything in the army books. We're looking for little, little nuggets of gold, basically, just to expand out those units. And we scrutinise all of that stuff. So one little ni nicety that we picked up on is um, a lot of debate on about whether squigs pop, whether they go boom. If you play as Wurzag, which is our, our our free legendary lord, he's got a quest where. You go up against these squigs, they're great fun and uh, should make for an entertaining battle for you guys to fight at home.